Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful people. Welcome in to another Epi of League Unlocked. My name is Eric Flynn, a little Han Solo. On today's Epi, you know the drill, and we are giving an extra nod, an extra shout out to the Sega, the era, the dynasty that is and was Team Solo Mid in the LCS. Today, put your sunglasses on because we got the most polarizing team maybe in the history of the LCS. So we are looking at the five best and worst moments in the history of Team Solo Mid in no particular order, but at the very least for every negative or bad moment, we're going to look at a highlight. Or if you're a glass half empty kind of person, for every good moment, we're looking at a bad moment. And some of them go hand in hand. Some of them are thematically appropriate some of them are from the very same year and we start with maybe the two most iconic plays from the same player on the same champion in the same year yes we're talking about lucian yes we're talking about double lift and let's look at the good side first Pretty consensus, one of the best plays in LCS history comes in game four of the summer finals against Cloud9, where he has the perfectly played team fight on Lucian. There's the Weaver's Wall, Bjergsen gets picked off easily. It ends up being a triple kill for Hauntzer, but it's all the work is done for Double Lift. It's the immaculate team fight out of him. He ends up doing like 12,000 damage or something crazy. You've got the great call from Azale about him touring the team fight. TSM is at a gold deficit at this point in the game. Um, Impact's having an incredible series. Who knows how this series would play up in hindsight if it ends up going to a game five obviously tsm ends up winning that fourth game to win at the time uh their first split in a couple of splits after they had gotten taken down from clg but this was you know peak level 2016 summer where they were absolutely dominating everybody and dub double lift was at the forefront of it especially on the solution pick so it was very impressive Obviously out of him and some of the height of the fandom for not just Double Lift, but for TSM as a whole. Combine that with the rivalry that they already had with C9 and it was uh, peak LCS in those finals. Then you go to that very same world championship and unfortunately, we got to look at the other side of this coin. The bad and the ugly. It's both of them against Samsung Galaxy. We've all seen the clip hundreds of times. Double Lift. Dashes into Crown after winning a team fight, and the real tragedy in this one is he plays this team fight so cleanly beforehand that you're ready to praise him, you're ready to see TSM go get a Baron, potentially beat Samsung, and we've done these what if videos before. If he doesn't die there, they get the Baron, maybe they win that game, maybe they're getting out of groups. In fact, they probably are getting out of this group of death, and then, well, if they're that top seed that Samsung had, you're matching up against uh, H2. K slash Cloud9 or Cloud9 in the quarters, then H2K in the semis. Maybe there's an avenue where this TSM is actually going to the world finals. I know it sounds absolutely insane. One of the most wacky what ifs possible, but going from that summer split highlight real play to an incredibly well played team fight against Ruler and Core JJ, one of the best teams in the world, to dashing into crowd, getting blown up living in infamy forever, even having animations made about it truly is uh, one of the saddest uh, parts of TSM. And it feels harsh to call it one of the worst moments because, again, there were such high expectations that even though they didn't get out of groups in 2016, they still performed pretty well. It's not like they just rolled over and died. They were competitive time and time again against both RNG and Samsung Galaxy. So uh, what could have been? If Double Lift only managed, excuse me, to not dash into Crown's victor. And uh, it's funny because Crown was actually played well in that tournament as opposed to 2017, which don't worry. We will touch on that one a little bit later as well. But Double Lift Solution, they call it his pocket pick for a reason. And this is first and foremost that reason why it was 2020 now. That's where we head to the next spot for TSM. And again, it is... The same year, back-to-back -back tournaments, really, where you talk about the incredible ebbs and flows, highs and lows that is historically associated with Team Solo Mid. 
We'll start with the positive side. Yet again, we're going to that summer playoff bracket run. They start in the upper bracket, proceed to get swiftly 3-0 stomped by one of their former teammates in Hauntzer over on the Golden Guardians, and things are looking rough for the reunion of Double Lip coming back to TSM after he had obviously won four straight titles with Team Liquid. Uh, but this is where the miracle comes in. They come back to beat Dignitas, who were a 5-13 team that had no business being in playoffs anyways. But then they get the reverse sweep to keep their seasons alive. They got a Bjergsen Zillion sighting against Golden Guardians, the very team that just swept them in the upper bracket. And they proceed to go through Cloud9, eliminating their chance at Worlds, then Team Liquid, then FlyQuest in the finals. They end up playing 25 games in this miracle playoff run that nobody had any hope or expectations for them to be coming out on top. That's exactly what they do, but 25 games is more than you get in an entire regular season. This is the Spica, Broken Blade, Bjergsen, Doublelift, and Biofrost slash Treats, but Biofrost ended up being the starter towards the end of that playoff run, so three-fifths of those 2016-2017 rosters that dominated the LCS as a whole, but they win their first title in a very long time. We're talking 2017 summer, which is another year that we'll get to, but first title in three years. They go as that first seed to the world championship, and it, it the hype is there. It feels like peak levels of TSM, this miracle run through, fan favorites, double lift, and Bjergs and Riot is frothing at the mouth because they get to do so many teasers and player profiles with the two pillars of the LCS, the faces of the entire league in Doublelift and Bjergsen, and we get it going to the World Championship. We get them in this incredibly hype group. We get NA versus EU against Fnatic, Gen G, BDD versus Bjergsen, LGD and LPL team that's slumping. In hindsight, I think we all forget at this World Championship, most people thought or we're picking TSM as maybe that second seed behind Gen.G to be getting out of this group ahead of Fnatic, contested spot for them. LGD, again, had been very shaky in the play-in stage. So people were wouldn't have been surprised if TSM got out of this group. Obviously, it ends up going oh so differently as they go 0 and 6 with low light after low light. You've got the nine men sleep out of Spica, which even watching to this day, Unbelievable that he freezes everybody. Nobody goes in when there's a five man. Absolutely unbelievable. They've got horrible Baron calls where they throw a game against Gen G. They straight up trade Baron for Nexus against LGD. Self made is one shot and people on Evelyn just walking up and stealing dragons. It is a full fledged montage of ineptitude from this TSM first seed. Obviously, the first first seed ever to go zero and six, not pick up a single game. So it's back to back, not back to back years, but 2016 and then 2020, the highs of a summer split capturing a title looking so good. And then the lows of disappointing on the international stage, which again is the theme, the mantra of TSM over the years, the 2021 though, particularly poignant and bad because you have that climb up miracle run in the playoff bracket after such a long year of games and then the absolute steep off a cliff descent from that first seed to a zero and six and a speed run to the airport memes are officially born for this TSM roster and it is ah, truly the ebbs and flows the highs and lows that we get out of one team solo mid roster now we transcend a little bit back to the peak, the heyday, the good old times of TSM in 2017. For me, the highlight is the entire summer split, really, because they were so incredibly dominant in both spring. That's when Wild Turtle was there. Double Lift comes back for summer after taking a split off. You get the old band back together, and they look damn good throughout that playoff run. You go to the finals against Immortals, and 
We all remember this fourth game because it's where IMT gets a 10K, really an 11K gold lead. Now a single kill to the name of TSM. They look done and dusted. And then there's this absolutely ludicrous comeback where they go on a 20 to one kill score after going down seven and zero to come all the way back from an 11K deficit to end up winning their third at the time, the only team to three-peat in the LCS, obviously. Team Liquid would go on to break that record, but not at the moment, not at the time. TSM are at the very tippity top of the LCS and then coming back from such an impressive deficit, I feel like fully cemented that again, the same roster that we saw in 2016 Worlds, this was it. This was the redemption, they were gonna go back. You're excited about what they've been doing at the LCS. You're excited that, again, they've reached maybe even exceeded what you saw out of 2016 just running it back with the same five the development is there the synergy is there everything looking online for them they're clearly the best team in the lcs single-handedly raising the level of the entire league of teams like cloud nine of teams like immortals who made their first finals and learned some valuable lessons that they proceeded to not uh, execute at all at the world championship but again now in hindsight 2017 worlds is the infamous zero and ten week two out of north america and unfortunately again in the same year back-to-back -to -back tournaments the incredible highs of a three-peat 11k deficit comeback to the world championship where they had the group of death in 2016 they are granted blessed by the rito gods with a group of life featuring world elite flash wolves and misfits misfits full of rookies guys making their debuts at the world championship and it's a two-in-one start for tsm they look good they honestly look like the best team in the group this is it this is the team looking for redemption from failure at the 2016 world championship the three peating lcs champions this is the time to swiftly poo poo the bed in that week two. Not only do they not make it out of groups, but the level of ineptitude that they show. They have a chance to clinch a spot. They have to beat a zero and five Flash Wolves team. They don't just lose to a zero and five Flash Wolves team. They get completely massacred and demolished on the rift. And they follow that up with a tiebreaker performance against Misfits that is absolutely abysmal. They had already rolled over against World Elite earlier and they just didn't show up. They become so incredibly passive that this is where the memes of TSM just sitting there waiting for the game to end fully come true. And in 2017 is such a bigger failure than 2016 to me because A, you've learned from that first run at the World Championship. You were competitive against teams that ended up finishing top four or going to the World Finals in a much more difficult group. You were more competitive a second year with the same roster against a group that should be, you should be vying for the first seed, not just a tiebreaker to even maybe get out a second, but absolute disaster class. And this is obviously where the roster ends up blowing up. And another truly what if story, if this TSM roster at least makes quarter finals in 2017, feel like that should have been the bare minimum for this squad coming into this group. And this is, this is what made it, I'm sure so painful to be a fan of TSM because they were so good, in, uh, not internationally, the opposite. They were so good domestically and in the LCS, you were constantly waiting to see that level get reached on the international stage. It obviously never did. Time and time again, they never reached that level that they were at in the LCS. Of course, the competition level is at such a higher level. That is the main reason why, but ah, 2017, that world championship was a real painful one for all TSM fans. Now, let's, we don't even need to go internationally for this next one. And this is, those are the, the first three, they were all in the same year. You could have a best and worst moment. This one, we're trying to, we're stretching a little bit for themes. We're talking specifically a tale of two game fives. So let's start the good way. We're going way back to 2014. Bjergsen captures his first LCS title. It comes against Cloud9, but before they even got there, this whole run, I think people were sleeping on TSM as a whole because they had swiftly gotten trounced by Cloud9. 
uh, in the spring split, 3-0 in the finals. This is the year that LMQ is uh, in the league before they implemented a import rule. It was five Chinese players, but TSM didn't win a single game against LMQ in the regular season. They proceed to win a game five semifinal matchup against them. Dyrus is fired up. He's screaming, excited to get a solo kill against Ackerman. Then we go into this game five. They're kryptonite against Cloud9. They have not beaten them in back-to-back -back finals. We go to that fifth and decisive game. This is the Wild Turtle Quadra kill where he gets disgustingly lucky with some crits. But hey, doesn't matter. They win the game. Everyone's fired up. TSM is back at the top of the table. This is a rare. It actually translates to Worlds because they finish top eight and take a game off of Samsung White, who were the eventual world champions. Even though Samsung White was definitely trolling in that game after they'd gone up 2-0. But we digress. It doesn't matter because they won the game. They had a solid performance at Worlds. This is peak TSM. Yes! This is my favorite team in the LCS. Heck yeah, man. Bay life. We love to see these guys perform. So 2014 Summer and Worlds, you can just look on and reminisce with only good memories and good vibes. Then we jump forward. That game five, both game fives went great for them. Game five, 2019 spring. Finals against Team Liquid. We know which one this is. We love you, Sven, but this is... Uh, this is not good. First, you have him doing the look down at Jensen because he shows short in the teaser or the opening ceremonies. Then you have him hovering over Echo, disrespecting him from those 2017 finals where he forgot to ulti. And then Sven proceeds to go walk into a Skarner and get caught out. He has absolutely no business being there. And he has talked about this countless times saying, there's no way the Ezreal should ever die here unless gets caught out by the slow from Skarner, proceeds to whip his E, gets caught out. Not only once, then there's a moment later in the game where he arcane shifts forward into a bush and Jensen proceeds to, you know, pop him and get full revenge for the taunting that Sven put on this poor guy. And then they lose. And not only did they lose that game five, TSM was up 2-0. They get reverse swept and then bounce back to have a dominant early game in game five before throwing it all away courtesy of Sven. This is MSI was on the line. This is we had been waiting a long time to see TSM get back after a disaster of 2018 that we saw out of them. Broken Blade looks devastated. Acadian, this is the only opportunity he ever gets to be on that big stage, to go to an international event, and it is taken away from him. Obviously, we've heard Sven talk about time and time again how that's one of the most painful losses, I imagine, for him. Painful moments because so much of it he took on his shoulders. Even when his teammates are saying, it's okay, it's okay, it's fine. He's saying, no, it's not. I got caught out and lost this to the game finals and ruined our chances to go to MSI. Which sounds harsh, but is kind of true. Now, in hindsight, this Team Liquid roster did end up upsetting Invictus Gaming at that MSI event that they qualified for because of this game. Would TSM have done the same? I'm going to say no. So as an NA fan, you should be happy that Team Liquid ended up going uh, and got the upset against IG. But as a TSM fan, absolute pure devastation for how things played out in that Game 5 for Zven. Uh, truly, truly a tragic loss. Then we get to, and again, these are in no particular order, but I think the worst of the worst comes here. So much so that we're going to start with the bad stuff first. And this is a tricky one. It's hard to look at a specific spot, but really 2021 to 2022 TSM. Uh, because number one, you have all the off-riff drama. You have Peter Zhang taking money from players, uh, sending false VODs. For players coming over, you had all the stuff with Reggie too, but specifically the Peter Zhang one let's talk about because this is the era where Kaiduo and Shen Yi come over and you heard Spika, who was on this roster, talks about he was showing the wrong bots, saying, look at this Kaiduo guy, he's popping off. And it wasn't even him, it was some other random player from the LPL, but who knows what kind of influence uh, this had on him actually signing with the team. But... These guys come over, Peter Zhang, Spika again says he was the, Peter Zhang was the only one speaking Chinese, doing all the communicating, taking loans from players, so much inappropriate stuff. And then you combine it, TSM has a one in eight start with this Kaido Shen Yi lineup. It is, it, it didn't feel like this was the same team 
that you would see in 2017 dominating, even 2019 being in finals, 2020 miracle runs. This was painful to watch, to see one of the most iconic brands and organizations in the history of the LCS just absolutely floundering on and off the rift. Thank goodness Spica got the hell out of there after this uh, year and went over to FlyQuest, even though things didn't go so great for him. Still better than being on this TSM dumpster fire. I'm surprised he even was able to bounce back for how poorly at times he was treated on this TSM squad, but mainly the off the rift stuff with Reggie and Peter Zhang, just absolutely terrible uh, for TSM and North American Esports as a whole. Quickly, we'll touch on one more positive highlight, and that is IEM Katowice 2015. One of the biggest trophy cases and accolades for TSM, and I know people like to poo-poo on this tournament because you say, well, who did TSM actually beat? They beat CJ Entis, who were not looked at as the best team in the LCK at the time. They didn't have to play GE Tigers, who were dominating everybody in that spring split because... World Elite, a 10th place team, LPL team at the time, got a massive upset against them. So TSM only beat this World Elite team. They beat the Flash Wolves and CJ Entis, but I don't care. It was still an IEM event, still international claim and recognition. And it is really the last time you're talking about uh, a North American team winning an international title even if the competition wasn't of the highest level there were still plenty of other big teams there this was sk gaming's forgiven roster was there cloud nine was there because they had won a previous iem event but this was honestly dominant from tsm from start to turn uh and this whole tournament you got to see bjergsen on zed popping off assassins were more on the meta it was the debut year of santorin and he looked great wild turtles aggressive as ever this was peak TSM and their fandom spreading internationally. So still one of the most polarizing organizations. The highs were so incredibly high and the lows were so incredibly low. We will miss TSM as a brand. Let's hope we see them uh, over in another region at some point. But that is it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. You people stay beautiful as always. Thanks for watching and we will catch you on the flippity flip.